Welcome to our service of Holy Communion. Uh, three notices before we start. Uh, first of all, we're beginning to put some, some of our worship onto Zoom. Uh, this is a, an online interactive way of getting together and actually worshipping together, which is very exciting. Uh, if you're interested, do let us know and we might be able to help you get onto Zoom. Uh, second notice, thank you so much to all who have helped with our new food bank. It's up and running. Donations are coming in. We've sent out details of how to donate. We're very excited about, about that. And actually equally excited about the response to our gift day. Now that's probably long been forgotten because it was uh, the day before lockdown. Uh, but we already raised £7,500, which has already been matched. We'd love to raise that last 2500 get to our, our total of 10000 But there'll be more about that when things have calmed down a bit. Let's pray. Let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our reading for today, the first Sunday after Easter, it's taken from John and it's one of the great resurrection readings. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they're forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they're not forgiven. An amazing uh, reading. And uh, I've been really struck by uh, these cards that the primary school uh, have produced to help children with mental health. And the one I've been looking at this week, I've done it on my family time, is this one. It's just a simple card. It says, you're great. And it encourages the children to say nice things to each other, which is actually quite a good thing to do in life. Uh, it's not good to be unkind to ourselves. And I, I certainly have caught myself doing that many times in my life. It's not a good habit to fall into. Um, but, you know, sometimes it, it's really hard, isn't it, to say you're great. I mean, we can do stupid things. Uh, I can remember a blissful break time spent uh, in, at school one day dropping water bombs on people. It was great fun and a worthy activity I felt at the time. However, we did decide to use a very, very large party balloon which we had to carry on a tray. And I can remember as this thing sailed towards our poor hapless victim, thinking, golly, if that thing hits him on the head, he's going to knock him unconscious. Now, fortunately, it broke up on a balcony on the way down and only soaked his trousers. But it could have been a very, very stupid thing to do indeed. Sometimes we're, we're guilty, aren't we, of gross stupidity. Sometimes we just disappoint ourselves. There's still someone at school that I'm, I'm sad that I wasn't a better friend to because it, it, the, just the way he was treated at school has affected his life and continues to affect his life. Um, sometimes we have regrets, don't we? Sometimes life is just so very, very difficult. We can't say we're great because we're not great. Nothing's great. You know, there are people uh, who I speak to this week who are very, very frightened. Very, very frightened. There are people who are very, very sad. All for really, really good reasons. Many, many people in our society today are very sad. And if you roll all those things into one, you know, fear, sadness and disappointment, uh, fallenness, if you like, you're probably quite close to the disciples in the upper room. Doors shut for fear of the Jews. The not believing the, the tales that the women had told them that morning of having seen Jesus. So disappointed in themselves so bitterly disappointed in themselves. They hadn't stuck with him. They'd just run away when Jesus faced a proper trial. 
And then Jesus comes and stands among them. And you know what? He's not unkind to them. The first thing he says are these incredible words, peace be with you. And what's amazing about Jesus' peace is it, it has its capacity. It's alive. You know, there's a lovely man called Chris Gore who uh, has been praying. He's got dis a disabled girl himself, but he's been praying for uh, autistic children in the last over the last two or three years and has seen incredible results from just simply praying peace over these amazing children. They've seen real healing. It's incredible. There's an amazing story in this, one of my favourite autobiographies of all time, written by this amazing woman, Corrie Ten Boom, a great saint, really. Uh, Corrie was in Ravensbrück concentration camp with her sister. They were stuck in a Stalag that had 1,400 people that was designed for 400. The latrines, eight of them, were overflowing and disgusting. Uh, this was their first night. Bunk beds were breaking under the strain of all the people. There was cursing, there was arguing, there were, there were fights particularly over the windows. This should be open, this should be closed. People were dying of stuffiness. People were dying because they were so cold. Uh, not literally, but, you know, they felt like it. And in this Starlog, in the middle of that misery, Betsy Ten Boom said to her sister, there hasn't been enough prayer here. Let's pray for God's peace to fill this room. And they started praying and nothing happened. But then actually, people started to calm down. People started to... Uh, sort of be uh, more at peace and and actually there was some good humor shown compromises and before long people were all asleep god's peace is alive do you know it's peace today uh, and then having given his disciples his peace he says this amazing thing as the father has sent me so i send you receive the holy spirit and he breathes on them. Uh, and it's just an extraordinary thing that Jesus says at that point. He's sending the disciples into the world to be like him. And everyone knows that they can't be like him unless he lives in them in some way. And that's what he does. He breathes over them. He says, receive my peace. Receive the Holy Spirit today. And, you know, our capacity to be like Jesus isn't about how good we can be if we button ourselves up tight and try our hardest and run our hardest. It's, it's not about that. It's all about receiving. There's a lovely story I know about a, 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 a Sally Army, a Salvation Army major who went over to Toronto, to Toronto when the Holy Spirit was really breaking out. People were just falling over uh, under the power of the Spirit. And uh, this man went to the front for prayer and... Uh, he stood stalwartly upright. Everyone else around him was falling over. Uh, one of the helpers came up to him and said, you know what, I just want to give you this book. And uh, he said, uh, he said, what? He said, it's about receiving the Holy Spirit. And this man, uh, I don't think he'd be given very much in his life. He said, no, don't worry, I'll, I'll go to the bookshop and I'll buy it. He said, no, don't worry, this, this book, it's about receiving the Holy Spirit and I'm giving it to you right now. Sometimes I think we find it hard to receive from God because we still feel that we have to earn it. But you know what? It's all about opening our hearts to him and just simply believing that when we invite the Holy Spirit to come and fill us, that he does just that, which he does. And just allowing the Holy Spirit to mould us, to shape us, to speak to us, to fill us. And we can do that every day. And it can be as simple, you know, as just lighting a candle. And just remembering as we light that candle that Jesus is somehow with us. And allowing our Saviour to say, peace be with you to each one of us. I'd encourage you to do that this week. We're going to have our time of Holy Communion now. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction, 
for the sins of the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. So take this, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, and remember his body broken for you. Take this, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, and remember his blood shed for you. A final blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. And God bless you this week. Amen. <laughs>